So you've just read Betzer's rhetorical situation. I know it's a little complicated on the first pass, so I'm going to talk you through the three key concepts. The first key concept in Bitzer's rhetorical situation is exigence. Exigence in some ways is not unlike purpose in that when someone writes to address a rhetorical situation, what they're trying to do is address an exigence. An exigence is any problem that can be positively modified through action. So when you're writing in, a, in response to a rhetorical situation, what you're trying to do is move the audience to address an exigence. So for instance, um, if there's a recycling campaign on campus, what that campaign is doing is addressing the rhetorical situation of waste, um, of poor uh, waste management, and their campaign is their text, the thing that they're writing, and the purpose of their campaign is to get people to recycle. Their campaign is successful if people do recycle, therefore addressing their exigence. So an exigence is a problem that can be modified and the writer plays a key role in the modification of that problem by trying to persuade an audience to act on that problem. Audience is the second key concept. So audience, from the last description you could probably tell, audience is related to exigence. Typically when we talk about audience, it's anyone who happen to, happens to read a text or hear a speech in Bitzer's rhetorical situation, an audience are those group of people who are capable of acting upon the exigence. So for instance, in our recycling campaign, I'm the audience of that campaign because I have the capability of recycling. Um, the audience of a C of C campaign would need to be C of C students. So if the campaign were picked up and placed at Florida State University, um, the Florida State students would not be the audience because the campaign is only specific to those students at C of C. Finally, constraints are those things that limit the audience from acting upon the exigence. Constraints can come from the speaker, so maybe the speaker has a particular reputation that doesn't make that speaker persuasive. Uh, constraints can come from the audience. Uh, maybe the audience is tired. Maybe the audience already has a set of entrenched beliefs. So those are the three parts of Bitzer's rhetorical situation. What those three parts do is they really provide a vocabulary that name what happens when someone sits down to start to write. And by someone sitting down to start to write, I mean me, um, you do a similar thing. Uh, what calls writing into existence, all writing, if it's a diary that um, you scribe in at night, or if it's a text message, or a Facebook post, or an academic essay, whatever the writing happens to look like, that piece of writing is called into existence by a rhetorical situation. That writing seeks to resolve an exigence by moving an audience to act on that exigence, and a set of constraints limit what an audience can and can't do with the text that they've received. Enjoyed this picture of my dog. <laughs>